Franz Kafka, 1971. Rejection. When I meet a pretty girl and beg her, be so good as to come with me, and she walks past without a word, this is what she means to say. You are no duke with a famous name, no broad American with a red Indian figure, level, brooding eyes and the skin tempered by the air of the prairies and the rivers that flow through them. You have never journeyed to the seven seas and voyaged on them, wherever they may be, I don't know where. So why, pray, should a pretty girl like myself go with you? You forget that no automobile swings you through the street in long thrusts. I see no gentleman escorting you in a close half-circle, pressing on your skirts from behind and murmuring blessings on your head. Your breasts are well laced into your bodice, but your thighs and hips make up for that restraint. You are wearing a taffeta dress with a pleated skirt, such as delighted all of us last autumn, and yet you smile, inviting mortal danger from time to time. Yes, we're both in the right, and to keep us from being irrevocably aware of it, hadn't we better just go our separate ways home? On the tram. I stand on the end platform of the tram and am completely unsure of my footing in this world, in this town, in my family. Not even casually could I indicate any claims that I might rightfully advance in any direction. I have not even any defense to offer for standing on this platform, holding on to the strap, letting myself be carried along by this tram, nor for the people who gave way to the tram or walk quietly along or stand gazing in shop windows. Nobody asks me to put up a defense indeed, but that is irrelevant. The tram approaches a stopping place, and a girl takes up her position near the step, ready to alight. She is as distinct to me as if I had run my hands over her. She is dressed in black. The pleats of her skirt hang almost still. Her blouse is tight and has a collar of white fine meshed lace. Her left hand is braced flat against the side of the tram. The umbrella in her right hand rests on the second top step. Her face is brown. Her nose, slightly pinched at the sides, has a broad around tip. She has a lot of brown hair and stray little tendrils on the right temple. Her small ear is close set. But since I am near her, I can see the whole ridge of the whirl of her right ear in the shadow at the root of it. At that point I asked myself, how is it that she is not amazed at herself, that she keeps her lips closed and makes no such remark? Resolutions To lift yourself out of a miserable mood, even if you have to do it by strength of will, should be easy. I force myself out of my chair, stride around the table, exercise my head and neck, make my eyes sparkle, tighten the muscles around them, defy my own feelings, welcome A, enthusiastically supposing he comes to see me, amiably tolerate B in my room, swallow all that is said at C's, whatever pain and trouble it may cost me, in long draughts. Yet even if I manage that, one single slip, and a slip cannot be avoided, will stop the whole process, easy and painful alike, and I will have to shrink back into my own circle again. So perhaps the best resource is to meet everything passively, to make yourself an inert mass, and if you feel that you are being carried away, not to let yourself be lured into taking a single unnecessary step, to stare at others with the eyes of an animal, to feel no compunction, in short, with your own hand, to throttle down whatever ghostly life remains in you, that is, to enlarge the final piece of the graveyard, and let nothing survive save that. A characteristic movement in such a condition is to run your little finger along your eyebrows.